Get Warrior Talk, Mental Training 101 with Andrew Whitman and Dutch Coleman. And now back to Andrew and Dutch. All right, back in the saddle. Dutch and Andrew, Andrew and Dutch. Get Warrior Tough. Hey, Dutch. Um, I know we were talking. Of, you know, we're talking about elite team identity, and we're going to talk about belonging. But I thought before we jumped into that part, and we're talking about the uniqueness of these different teams, it really, I, I would like us to just have a little side discussion about, like, first your own personal identity, because if you don't have that taken care of, it's hard. It, it's an ex, adopting the uh, team's identity is an external, and what I mean by that is I've worked with a lot of spec ops guys in the spec ops community, seals, rangers, marines, also in law enforcement, cops, and we talk about this that you know when that goes away, like when a cop retires, their identity was the badge and the gun and the thin blue line and being belonging to that, you know, brotherhood, and when that's gone, they like struggle because now the identity's gone. So there is a danger in adopting the team's identity as your own personal identity because the team's identity is actually external to you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The, the team's identity needs to be uh, uh, something that you're enhancing because of your identity. Now, we know all these, these – we'll just use the organizations and the teams that we've discussed, right? Yeah, There's yeah. a recruitment um, that's go, that goes on, right? Right. And there's all of them, pro- all of them have a recruitment right. All process. of them. There's yeah. a process of selection. You have to qualify in a sense, right? And there's a lot of different measures, but ne- there's not just one measure. It doesn't, they don't say if you can swim real good, you're a Navy SEAL. No, it, you know, there's a bunch of different measures, and there's things like character, and it can be things like identity. It can be things, you know, who you are, what you accomplish, what you stand for, all those things to go into it, right? So, if you have an established identity, uh, whatever you bring to the table can be a part a part and parcel to why you're in that organization. So if I'm Clemson football and I'm recruiting you to be a part of my elite organization that that's built with a strong identity or what have you, I'm going to look at yours and whatever your identity is needs to add to what I'm trying to accomplish. So I don't really need you to come in with no identity, with none of the none of the traits that I'm seeking that will straight, strengthen my identity. You need to be bringing something to the table, which makes me then select you as a part of my uh, organization. I'll give you one example. Yeah. The New England Patriots had, um, I can't remember what the number was, but they had a large number of college graduates. They had more college graduates on their team than anyone. And we know in the NFL, you have people that leave after the junior year sure. that can leave after the third year of college, which they can still be two years away from graduation because we know sometimes it takes five years to graduate. You get red shirted, all the. But New England. Um, despite all the young talent that comes out early, we know a lot. Some of the best talent leaves early, so this yeah. this is not this is not just about making your program good talent wise. If you have a large number of college educated uh, uh, college graduates, I should say, then you were seeking more than just talent. You were seeking that identity. You were seeking things beyond just what's happening on the field, but you knew that those things uh, that those people possessed would then enhance was not only what's happening on a locker room, but then translates to the field. So when when those people bring those those uh, college degrees or those mindsets into the locker room, they're building upon what the team identity is before they got there. So you, you have to have some sort of, or you should have some sort of identity that's going to add to the identity that, as you said, is, is external to you. That should not be, you, that should not be uh, who you are. It should be, what you're a part of, and you're bringing your identity along to to make that identity even better, to strengthen that. Right, because what happens when, and there are times, like, like every whether it's the Patriots or it's Alabama football or it's Clemson football or it's the Rangers or it's the Seals, this is only for a short time. Because mm-hmm. every one of these things that we're talking about, they require a certain level of physical skill. A, le- a peak level of physical fitness, and it, uh, I'll say it like this, it's a young person's game. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, it, it, so eventually those things are all going to wear out, those things that they're looking for, what we call the hard skills. And that's where you could get shipwrecked if, you, I, if your identity is actually, your own identity is replaced by the external of the team. Absolutely. Even Tom Brady is just a part of the program. He's a part of the yeah. system, right? And he'll find That's out great. as soon as as soon as his skills break down to a level where it doesn't make a good business decision to keep him on, he'll find out. It'll be like Joe Montana going to the Chiefs. 
Absolutely. Or when, or if he's replaced by injury, right? I think yeah. they went three and one last year when he was out four games. That doesn't mean the team's better without him. No. It means that the the organization is is strong enough from an identity standpoint and and from a right. you know talent standpoint as well. But it, it shows you that they're not going to fall apart. Now we know a lot of organizations they lose the starting quarterback, greatest quarterback of all time. They're not going three and one, and it's not because the guy's not great. There are other factors involved. So they're able to go three and one, keep the ship in the right direction until he returns. So th- this is part of that. You know, if Bill Belichick retires, I, I believe New England has built an organization that's going to give them an opportunity to maintain a success because the the Bill Belichick, what he brought to the table, it has gone throughout the entire organization from the bottom to the top. Right. So right. the owners, the owners are now behaving in a Bill Belichick fashion, because I give him credit for the transformation of that organization. So, and, and he and he's uh, he's managed up, and right. the owners are now they have now bought into his way of thinking. So, if you think that he retires next year, they're going to search for a coach and hire a coach that fits that culture that that can strengthen help strengthen their existing identity. And they can hopefully keep that train moving. Right, in and the this same is direction. where you hire from somebody from the inside that's already right. This isn't now. If you had a weak identity, you're always looking for somebody from the outside to come in and fix this mess. Mm-hmm. Right, we see this in businesses all the time. Where, like, so I'll just use the example of like Wells Fargo. Right, they're a, they were a mess with all the fake accounts, and it was a, a culture of. I, we in the Navy, they call gun deck in the reports where we're, we're making it look like we're doing more work than we are, right? Signing mm-hmm. off and make it, right? So if they hired from somebody from the inside of that culture, they're going to continue to keep doing the same things that they were doing. So you need to bring somebody from the outside to come in and fix it. Same kind of like Uber. You know, we've had many shows on Uber. And Travis, bless his heart, right? He's not changing. And that, that culture, if you bring somebody from the inside to come keep Travis's feet to the fire and hold him accountable, well, that hasn't happened up to this point. Why would we think someone from the inside? You need to bring someone from the outside that is so that has an identity that is overpowering enough that he could change the culture or she could change the culture um, at Uber and keep Travis on track, right? Because we have to bring an outsider. So this is a huge key, right, that... If you have a strong identity, you could get promoted from within, mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. identity will continue. We don't want to bring an outsider and wreck it. If you have a weak identity, we're constantly looking for somebody from the outside to fix this mess. And we've seen that. We've seen it. Oh, like, again, we keep going back to sports. We've seen the NFL do that time after time after time. They're searching for that leader. To say, and, and they don't understand that, that these different people, no matter how great a leader they are, if they're coming into a toxic situation, it's that much more challenging to change that. So you have to change the whole organization uh, for the most part. And sometimes you can get lucky and you get that yeah. that leader that you get in and you just give him, you know, all the uh, the, uh, the power. Yeah, let's let's get this thing changed. But that rarely happens because people don't have they, they always have the mindset where they're not looking at themselves the right way. They're not doing that that uh, that self evaluation. They're looking at themselves as we are already here. We're we're NFL franchise, so we must be doing something right. Like no, no, that's 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 not the way it is. We have to we have to uh, uh, look at it in terms of. Uh, and I I'll go ahead and I'll say it. Um, my team in Washington. I don't even want to say their names. Uh, yeah. I, I I get sick thinking about it sometimes. <laughs> but you know we haven't accepted the fact that we're a mess right now, right? The moment that we and and it doesn't even have to be one hundred percent true that we're a mess. But if we start looking at ourselves like we're a mess. I mean, look at let's look at ourselves like we're the worst franchise ever, and go from from every little uh, uh, detail from the bottom to the top, and and evaluate every little detail about ourselves. Then and only then can we get better. And then we're gonna find, and we may even turn over some things that are good, and we may be able to grow some of those things, right? Let let some of those things uh, push out and affect the rest of the uh, the organization. But right now. We have this this uh, idea, and I've seen it in our ownership, and I, and I hear that our owner's a great guy. I know people that work for him. I hear he's a great guy. But when you hear the talk, the self-talk, it's like we're, we're not the problem. We just have to do this or we just have to do that. And no matter how much we try to do just this or just do that, we keep failing. We have to look at ourselves as if we're, we're a complete mess, and let's break it down. 
uh, piece by piece, and and, and let's put the, and, and and it can start with the identity. Strong, how strong hard identity. is that though? How hard is that, Dutch? And even this for, for not just sports teams, but businesses. I mean, you and I go in and out of businesses quite a bit, and we've worked with some, and we've worked with some for like a lengthy period of time, and it's still like they still. It seems like we're still struggling with that part of. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I got an answer to that. You said, "How hard is that compared to what?" Yeah, no, that's a good answer. <laughs> compared, compared to losing to what? ten years compared in a row, or yeah, twenty years in a row, yeah, or, you know, or losing <laughs> your business, or not hitting your targets, or right, right. And you could it, be it, a great guy, okay. And this is, <laughs> I was, uh, you've heard me say this before, Dutch, that um, I don't like the word nice, and and because the reason we there, there's a saying that says nice guys finish what last, right? But everybody, we're always teaching our kids to play nice and be nice. But mm-hmm. if you look at the root word, you know I like to look at like the history of words and the root words. Like leadership is a craftsmanship, you know, skill and in influencing, mm-hmm. direction, course, action, attitude, and opinion. Nice was actually meant timid. Ooh. It meant timid. So timid people do finish last. So the reason we like nice people is because we get to do whatever we walk all over them and we get whatever we want out of them. And that's why they do finish last. I'm not trying to be nice. to be like, that dude's a nice guy. That's because he's like milk toast, and he'll let you just do whatever you want. Mm. Mm. So when people say, yeah, is it, that's super nice to work, you know, I, I guarantee you, no one accused Nick Saban of being a nice guy. Oh, no. And, and you, know, you know what Nick Saban is not? He's not even nice to himself. Now, and, 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 and I'll put it this way. When I'm not, I, I don't need to be nice to myself in the offseason, right? I need to critically look at myself, look at all my uh, processes, look at all, look at everything I'm doing, you know, reevaluate my targets, everything. Yeah. I'm not being nice to myself. No. I'm being hard on myself. I right. do all those things, right? So that I do all those things throughout the entire offseason. So during the game, yeah, I, I can, can walk in full confidence that I'm ready. That's when the confidence kicks That's in. The That's the 53%. That's the difference in 53% better than people who are nice to themselves. Uh Damn, we're up on a break. All right, so don't be nice to yourself over the break and be right back. You're listening to Get More Your Tough Radio Show with Dutch and Andrew. 